So this is to introduce what we sincerely hope is our last prediction for the second and third fire signs of 1 Kings 18, which are mushroom cloud explosions. We don't know whether they're large conventional explosives or whether they're small, very small nuclear. One above the Hudson in Manhattan, one above the Thames round about Dartford. So we're, we're predicting Tebe 17 less likely and Tebe 20 more likely. Tebe 20 is January 20th, 21st. That's for the second fire sign which we think is in Manhattan. And then the third fire sign is Tebe 21, which is January 21, 22. And that's in London. And the 17th is the Friday. Oh, that's the Sabbath, 17th. Yeah, Tebe 17 is the Sabbath which is Friday, Saturday, and then Tebe 20 is Monday, Tuesday, and Tebe 21, January 21, 22, is Tuesday, Wednesday. All right, so going to our proofs. First of all, contest noon. So I sent this letter that began this interaction with the Watchtower off. 1992, L11, it was hand-delivered to Brooklyn, which was actually September 11th, I think, 1992, by Masood. And that began it. And then noon was when I started to mock them, 13 and a half years later, 2006 CR1. But I sent two letters, one 2006 CR1, the sign of journal letter, and then I sent a revised sign of journal letter a month later, 2006 CR1. So you could argue that my period of mocking them was that month. So if we take noon to be that month, then there's 4,910 BLC days from 1992 LL11 to 2006 LL1. And then you go a month forward, which is the length of noon. Then you do the afternoon, which is 4,910 days. And that takes you to 2019 Tebe 21, which is now our third fire sign date. And that will be the end of the contest day in the sense that it's the end of the... Well, that, that we've, I've, I've predicted the two fire signs and it's determined that I'm an Elijah. Or somebody else does it. <laughs> so that's contest noon. Rather than noon being the one day of the one letter of 2006 CR1, which would mean that the, the afternoon would start then and would end in Chislev 21, 2019, we extend noon to be 30 days long to run between the two letters I sent, both of which were mocking the watchtower, and then that extends the day by 30 days to Tebeth 21. And that's our new third fire sign date, and that would then be the, the late, late to NC Pentecost, and that's still the Super Pentecost. The Super Pentecost of 1 Kings 18 is the 2019 2NC Pentecost. Or the late version, or the late late version, or the second version, or the late second version, or any version you want of that Pentecost. Alright, going to Alan's appointment. He was appointed as the fourth apostle, the fourth angel bound above the Euphrates in Revelation 9, 13 to 15 terminology. 2015, Chislev 21, we know it's that date, because I, although I don't remember the date, and I didn't write to anybody telling them that I've made Alan an apostle, I do remember being a mad numbering mathematician type person that he missed the previous festival and sunset was 1624 and that occurred that nails it to 15 to 2015 Heshvan 21 when sunset in London was 1624 he turned up about five minutes late and so he came to the next one the next month which was Chislev 21 and that's when I made him an apostle and if you count four years from that you get to Chislev 21 but if you count for Pentecost from that, you can get to either Chislev 21, which is the late 2NC Pentecost, or you can get to Tebeth 21, which is the late, late or late second or third 2NC Pentecost. I mean, late second is either the late, late or the late second or the third 2NC Pentecost, because the first 2NC Pentecost is Heshvan, the next one is Chislev 21, and the next one is Tebeth 21. So, so you can run the four times as four Pentecost for Alan, and then that's the, the, the day, the month, the hour, and the year, four times, and we, we run them all as Pentecost. Then the, the angels are released to baptise, all four of them, on Tebeth 21, which would actually indicate that we don't start baptising people till Tebeth 21, which, or in fact Tebeth 22 or 21, which is possible, I suppose. We haven't started yet, of sight of fire sign responders anyway. Then the go back seven times of 1 Kings 18, 43, 44. Again, it could be seven years, 
or it could be seven Pentecost. So we know that Elijah was appointed and went up the top of Mount Carmel in Zohar over the two NCs on Chislev 21, 2012, because it's a second appointment after a Damic FDS4. This was a non-Adamic appointment, second. So instead of happening, ha happening at the first Pentecost, two NC Pentecost, Heshvan 21, 2012, it occurs at the second. And then you go back seven times, well, if you do it in years, you end up 29, Chislev 21. If you do it in Pentecosts, you end up in Tebeth 21. And that's where we now take it to, to the Super Pentecost in Tebeth 21, the contest resolution, the end of the contest day, and the third fire sign. Incidentally, I'm not at all convinced that there are such things as first, second, third, and fourth marriage Pentecosts. I think you don't get a Pentecost until you've completed the marriage. Because Jesus got married, 2008, this and 22, in a Jubilee month on a first fruits day, that can't have been an appointment because you cannot have a first fruits in a jubilee month. So I think that the the fifth marriage, the completing first new covenant marriage, must be a, an appointment to first fruits and therefore has a Pentecost on Shabbat 9, the marriage being 2019, Chislev 20, but I'm not sure that the third and the fourth marriages or the first and the second were actually appointments because you don't really appoint half of a wife. I mean, you can, you can do it. I mean, they were appointed later, but the marriage itself was an appointment, and not until it's completed. And I, the reason I say that is we have the first 2NC marriage occurring on Shabbat 2, which is 2NC first fruits. It's, I don't know, fourth or fifth or something. Fifth, is it? Tishri, Heshvan, Chizat, fifth 2NC first fruits. But it's in a Sabbath month, and if it was an appointment, it, it couldn't be a first fruits. It couldn't occur. But I don't think it is an appointment because it's only half of the marriage. Six water jars at that one and then six water jars at the next one, which is eight R2. A bit of a technical point there. Anyway, so the go back seven times is to, to Tebet 21. So all these times aren't years, they're Pentecost, which is not surprising because 1 Kings 18 is all denominated in 50s. It's all about Pentecost and it's about tongues of fire licking up, licking up the dust. Tongues of fire, Pentecost. All right, now, now the ride of the first horseman, 23 days is the sentence count of Revelation 6, 1 and 2, and it, it goes from um, Chislev 22, when we were sealed, to Tebeth 15. So I've completed the ride, which means I've got the date, which I hope is true, and I think it is. But I've been in this position a few times before and been wrong every time so far. Then the 70 weeks of Daniel 9, from 30 days after the Laodicea fell to 2018 Ab 10, 30 days after that is the 30th day year of John 6, of rowing, before Jesus walked on the water and got in the boat, and that was him coming and the word going forth to restore and rebuild Jerusalem on Elul 10, 2018. And that ends with the 70th week, which is the marriage feast of the fifth marriage, which runs from 2019, Chislev 20 to 26, that's solar weeks. And during that week, Jesus was anointed the Holy of Holies at the end of the beginning of that week. And during that week, on Chislev 22, we were sealed. Uh, in print a seal on vision and prophet, says Daniel. I thought that meant me get the fire signs date right. Obviously it didn't. So it must be sealing the white horse of the first horse of the apocalypse, the two NCs. The Jericho Jubilee release. Now this is fascinating. So that happens on the 10th day of the 8th month in the 7th campaign year, which is the year to date from Sivan 1. And so the seventh month is the month of Tebeth, because the first seven months are taken as seven Sabbaths, then the eighth month is your Jubilee, you know, in the next Sabbath after the seven Sabbaths. And it's always the tenth of the month, the Jubilee release. So Tebeth 10 is the Jubilee release, but it's not a Passover entry day, because the last watch tower Passover was Chislev 14. What it is, it's an archetype of what goes on at the very end, which we hadn't quite got right. We thought the time of distress went from Chislev 21, 2019, which was the last day of, of late third watchtower cakes, to Chislev 21, 2020, the last day of late third Abrahamic cakes. But we're wrong, because there's always an extra month to the tenth of that month, where you can seize people, but they miss that Passover. So. The, the Christians are all getting, have to be into Zohar by Tishri 10 to get to the Tishri 15 late first Abrahamic Passover in Zohar. But if they don't, they can be seized up to Heshvan 10 for the kingdom. The not irreligious, non-religious, they have to get into Zohar by 2020 Heshvan 10 for the 
Heshbon 14, the second Abrahamic Passover of them. But if they miss that, they can be seized up to Chislev 10. And then the Babylonians, the people who are in religions which aren't Christian, poor chaps, they have the most difficult time because they've got to unlearn what they learn and relearn Christianity. It's, it's easier to get into the kingdom of God as an irreligious person than it is as an incorrect religious person because, you know, you haven't got a load of stuff to unlearn, you haven't got any baggage. So anyway, these people with all this false religious baggage, I mean, not that Christianity, most of it is false anyway, but at least it's based on something that was true at one point. Well, it still is true. I mean, even Judaism today it is part of Babylon, I suppose. But I don't know the answer to that. I'm not quite sure where the Jews fit into that scheme, actually. They were a true religion. Maybe they fit into the... Maybe it's Judeo-Christianity. Don't know. I don't think the Jews can be part of Babylon. That doesn't sound right. Don't know where to put the Jews. Anyway, God does. Well, he chose them. I'm sure they go with the Christians. They've got to be in by Tishri 10, I'd imagine. Anyway, the Babylonians have to be in Zoa by Chislev 10 for the late third Abrahamic Passover on Chislev 14. But if they miss that, they can be seized up to Tebeth 10. That's what I haven't realised. They get the same deal as everybody else. It's just delayed a month from the irreligious and they're delayed a month from the Christians. So that means now you've got this Tebeth 10 date. But Tebeth 10 date is a Passover entry date. But there is no Passover, no Abrahamic Passover at least, held by Zohar, because Zohar ends on Chislev 14, as far as we're aware. But there must be some kind of Adamic, well, there's the, the final Adamic execution of man is now Tebeth 14. That's the final Passover. And I'm not quite sure if there's some Passover held in the kingdom, not in Zohar, and how that works. I don't know how it works. But what I do know is that everybody living who is Adamic dies on that day. And those who've been seized for the kingdom are resurrected seven days later because the first fruits after Tebeth 14, the first day of the week after that, is in fact Tebeth 21 because Tebeth 20 is the Sabbath. And that is the escape because that's cakes, because cakes is a festival of escape. But the final escape is from Hades. So these people are resurrected. It's fantastic. Everybody sees the kingdom who misses Zohar but is nonetheless seized, you know, who gets there in that month, the 30 days after the last entry day for Zohar. So in other words, it's from Tishri 11 to Heshvan 10 for Christians, from Heshvan 11 to Chislev 10 for irreligious, and from Chislev 11 to Tebeth 10 for Babylonians. All that group who get kingdom seized but miss Zohar they all get Passover executed by in the Adamic Passover, which I don't fully understand, on Tebeth 14, 2020, and they get resurrected back into the kingdom seven days later on first fruits, the last day of cakes, their escape from Hades, Tebeth 21. So, in other words, the, the last day of Adamic death is Tebeth 14. That's the end of entry into Adamic death. That's the last day of Adam. But the cakes, and now I understand what the final cakes is, it's the resurrection of all those guys who were kingdom seized to miss so on, on Tebeth 21. Now that means the time of distress ends on Tebeth 21 because people are distressed when their loved ones have been killed, but they're undistressed when they get resurrected. So at the end of all distress will be Tebeth 21, 2020, and that means the beginning of the time of distress is Tebeth 21, 2019, which is our date for the third fire sign and the date for the end of the contest day, and the date for going back seven times, and the date for four Pentecosts after Anna's appointment, etc, etc. So that's why we absolutely think we've nailed it. The reason we couldn't nail it before is we didn't extend anything beyond Chislev 14. We thought that was the end of Adam, and Chislev 21, we didn't understand, was some type of a case which we couldn't understand. Now that we have this better understanding, you, you can't push this further than Teba 21, you can't, you can't. So basically, you have to start the time of distress on 2019 Teba 21, which is January 21, 22, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, January 21, 22. That's when the third fire sign occurs. That's when the time of distress begins. So the Jericho Jubilee release, it must be some type of an archetype for 2020 Teba 10, when the last Babylonians are seized. And I don't really know what it is. Maybe it's the last First New Covenant Reserves 
who miss the boat get seized by Laodicea but don't become first new covenant reserves. I don't know. I don't really know what it is, but it was a significant date. But no doubt they'll tell me when we meet the Laodiceans. Now, then we go to the antitype of 1026 Tishri 7 BC. That's when the, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the bull of Solomon's temple and the clouds filled the sanctuary on the seventh day of the seventh month, the seventh year of the construction of Solomon's temple. Whereas I got all of this on the 14th day of the seventh month of the seventh year of Zohar, which is of the construction of the Zohar temple, a non-Adamic Solomon's temple. And the reason we're the 14th and over the 7th is we're the second fulfillment in two sevens of 14. So that's a nice antitype of the 10, 1026 BC Tishri 7 archetype. So the, the, the antitype is, is 2019 Tebeth 14, the, the 14th day of the 7th month of the 7th year of the construction of the non-Adamic Solomon's Temple. Then we have the four Sabbaths of mono-synagogue teaching. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues in the Sabbaths of Luke 12 or 13 with the woman bent double for 18 years. Jesus can teach until you become a false church. The only seed became a false church on Chizef 22. So you want four Sabbaths after that. Now if they're to be weekly Sabbaths, they would be Chizef 26, Tebet 3, Tebet 10 and Tebet 17. That's why we go for Tebet 17 as a possibility for the second fast time, but we, we don't think it's very likely we do predict it, but we don't think it's very likely because it's not Pentecostal, it's just a weekly Sabbath. Better to go with four Sabbaths of third two NC weeks, which would be Chisev 29, Tebet 6, Tebet 13, Tebet 20. And Tebet 20 is the seventh Sabbath of two NC weeks, just before the Pentecost on Tebet 21. And the, the advantage of Tebet 20 is that the Pentecost count is actually two counts. It's a 49 count of seven Sabbaths, and then a 50 count when you add one more. So both the 49th day and the 50th day are part of a Pentecost count. So that's why we think there's a fire sign on Tebet 20 and a fire sign on Tebet 21. But the fourth Sabbath of third 20 weeks of monosynagogue teaching is Tebet 20. So there's definitely a fire sign. It will either that day or Tebet 17. And then from 2 Kings 1, the inclusive chief of the Pentecost and the Pentecost are eaten up by a fire sign. So there's got to be a fire sign for the inclusive chief, which is the Pentecost itself, which is Tepe 21, and a fire sign for the 50 count, which doesn't include the chief, uh, which could actually include the chief, actually. But it's got, to, it's got to also include the 50 count. So there's got to be a fire sign before Tepe 21, and there's got to be a fire sign on Tepe 21. But the fire sign before Tepe 21 can actually extend and keep burning all the way till Tepe 21, if it wants. Finally, we have the Ketib sentence count of Elijah's prayer. I've managed to get that to 40. Two, I think it is now, and you add that to Chislev 2, which is when the grain offering goes up, when he made his prayer, the nearest first fruits to the fire signs, first fruits which we actually celebrate. Chislev 2 was the appointment of the third Holy Spirit over 2 NC Zoa because it's third after Adamic FTS 4 and non Adamic FTS 4. Therefore, it happens not on Tishri 2, not on Hedgefan 2, but on Chislev 2. It happens on third 2 NC first fruits because it's a third group being appointed over the 2 NCs. So you count 42 inclusively from that, or exclusively, and you end up on, inclusively we count it, you end up on Tebeth 13, and that's when he's praying over giving the answer, giving the answer, because he gets the answer on Tebeth 14, which is when I got this, these dates. So that, that's it, we're expecting two fire signs, and incidentally World War III does not begin with those fire signs. World War III begins on Shabbat 6-7 because the Great Tribulation begins at nine days of the sentence count of 1 Thessalonians 5-3, which is nine months for the pregnant woman, or nine days for the Great Tribulation, when sudden destruction falls instantly upon them the minute they say peace and security. And they say peace and security on Shabbat 16, which is the mark of the beast day, and nine days after that inclusively is, is Shabbat 24 and exclusively Shabbat 25. That's when the Great Tribulation begins. It lasts for 24 days. It ends at the end of World War III, which lasts 42 days. So World War III begins 18 days before the Great Tribulation, 18 days before Shabbat 24. Five is Shabbat 6-7. That's when World War III begins. And what that means is that those who get raptured up into the second marriage, the two NCs, will be up in the ark to see the red horse because the scripture says in the Sinaiticus and not in any other codex, come and see. And it means come up into the ark and have a look at this horse from the ark. In other words, they've got to be raptured into the ark before the horse. In other words, the war can't start until the marriage has occurred. 
the war must begin, the Red Horse must start its ride during the first two NC marriage feasts in order that the two NCs see the horse from the Ark. And that's February 5 to 7 is when World War III begins. Alright, thank you very much.